Project Gorgon announced on the 10th of November 2023 that financial woes have stricken the company, effectively hamstringing future development. The team feared mass abandonment of the title, yet what happened next shocked everyone. Welcome to this interview in which I share a conversation with Jack and Cola, one of Project Gorgon's Game Masters. We discuss the current state of the MMO, new features released just this week, and what's in store for the future. I'm Marl MMO, and I connect gamers to MMOs they'll love. Project Gorgon is an old school inspired MMO RPG that draws from Ashran's Call's loot system, EverQuest's The World Before a Game design, and Ultima Online's vendor system, while sharing similarities with Final Fantasy XIV's one tune mini classes approach, Star Wars Galaxy social features, Black Desert Online's life skills, and RuneScape's sandbox emphasis. It's currently in early access on Steam, with nearly 2,000 very positive reviews. Positive feedback tends to emphasize the game's flexibility, complexity, and player-centered mechanics, whereas negative highlights its rough and ruddy state, in that its mechanics are deeper than its graphics are polished. There is no pay-to-win and no required subscription fee. It is currently on sale as part of the Steam Autumn event, and to celebrate, the development team is giving away 10 free copies of Project Gorgon. So if you're sick of run-of-the-mill MMOs and want to experience something new and refreshing built by industry veterans, there's never been a better time than now to give Project Gorgon a try. Listen to learn how to win. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, Jack and Cola, for joining me for another conversation about Project Gorgon. It's been admittedly too long. I think our last three-part conversation was about this time two years ago. So there's a lot to catch up on, a lot to talk about. For those who are new with respect to either playing Project Gorgon or maybe they've only orbited the community, community a little bit, uh, introduce yourself. Okay, well, I am known as Jack and Cola. I am an admin for Project Gorgon. I am also the live event coordinator. And I didn't see your character's avatar until it was, I think, this past Tuesday when, what, about 300 people flooded the Cerebule zone, and I realized that your, your in-game avatar is quite gigantic. It was, uh, it was shocking. Uh, it was fun to see. Yeah, it's uh, we. There's a, a couple of uh, admin level items that we can alter our appearance. So, uh, the 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 big long arms has kind of become popular with the community. <laughs> yeah, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, there was an event that happened a while back now, but I think we talked about it in our past interview, in which you summoned a horde of goblins to attack a barn in i forget the the name of the zone but then a particularly possessed deer decided to run amok and uh, i had a ton of fun and, and t dozens and dozens of players join joined uh, to kind of celebrate that and that's just kind of one of the different things that you provide uh, what uh, or not provide but uh, oversee manage um uh so curious what other types of events do you uh do you administrate for the community well, I do the uh, content development uh, for our static, or quote-unquote static weekend events, which are like uh, Attack of the World bosses, the civil service, and things like that. And those are programmable, repeatable, like you mentioned, they're static in terms of, they're not ad hoc in terms of uh, if you wanted an impromptu event, you also have tools for that, but you also build out the more on rotation uh, social uh, events as well. Correct, correct. Uh, actually, all of them were kind of ad hoc up until uh, the last couple of months. Uh, I've oh, actually... so that's kind of a new feature then, or a new kind of development. Uh, uh, yeah, moment. basically, it, it's to spare me a bunch of work. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, we're, we're actually, the, the, the hard set ones like the Civil Service and Attack of the World bosses, those were all primarily uh, originated on the live event system which is kind of the, the impromptu dynamic event system that we have. And uh, basically I'm just taking them and converting them and baking them in and making them a permanent part of the game client. So now they can be switched on and off at will. 
basically. Is that similar to the to the currently ongoing Halloween event, or is that a separate level altogether? That one is on a separate level. Uh, uh, Zeleon and Rishin, which are Halloween and, and Christmas, respectively, uh, those are actually Sight and Strand's babies. Uh, those were being uh, worked on before I started working on events and such, and those are their babies, so they get to work on and expand those, and I work on the rest of the stuff. So there's a lot of different events going on, either ad hoc or rotational holidays or these uh, weekend fixed ones. Fixed one. I'm curious, I was talking with uh, a member of the community, I've been doing a series of podcasts uh, on Project Gorgon, and he indicated that there are events that are player run and i don't know exactly by which mechanism that they are presented presumably to you or your team are there in-game tools that if someone wants to have a an event I, i'm just making something up where i don't know it's a market day or something is there a specific mechanism by which they make that recommendation and you institute it or are you part of that system or is that something else that that is part of the job uh, mm -hmm. like uh well, let's see what's going to be a good example here um the dance train we'll use that one as an example there there is mm -hmm. a guild that likes to do the dance train uh, they'll gather up everybody and they'll take everyone around to the specific npcs in the game where you can learn alternate dances for the interpreter oh, dance cool. skill. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they, they, they get in touch with me. Usually they'll catch me when I'm talking in game or they'll DM me on Discord or they'll send an email to events at projectgorgon.com and they'll let me know, hey, we want to run this. Uh, you know, what, what are the good dates? Because we try to coordinate it where we don't have too many events overlapping. Sure, that makes sense. So, you know, they get with me, we arrange a time and date, I put it on the event calendar so everybody can see it. Uh, in a lot of cases, they, they're they pretty much self-sufficient. I just assist with getting the word out, and if they need assistance with some portals or some small tools here and there, I'm, I'm glad to jump in and help, but uh, they like to do it on their own. And, and I, I came from that as well, so I get it. No, that's awesome. And, and one reason why we're starting the conversation here is one of the most memorable and, and valuable components in, in my mind about Project Gorgon is its community and how its community is not simply the, the players of the game, but as you've described in your capacity as a as a admin, uh, I imagine this is also true in a different sense for the developers, uh, but it's it's one giant virtual community in which there's collaboration cooperation and the the relationship you make uh relationships plural really uh that you make in the game is is one of the kind of paramount um benefits is the wrong word but um draws of the game in fact i i asked uh, followers on uh, or got subscribers on youtube who enjoy project Gorgon, what sticks out to them the most about the game about the, and at least half who replied indicated that it was the community community and so it's it's excellent to see that kind of people first design and, and seeing how uh, i mean your role really is centered on making the most of these interpersonal relationships in the game world oh absolutely i mean i, I said it uh, a little over five years ago when when i started uh, as an admin for elder game and it still hold i'll still stand behind it today Project Gorgon has the absolute best community in the MMO genre, hands down, mm -hmm. period. No arguments. And you've played MMOs for a number of years. Yeah, that's not a uh, siloed statement. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I I, my, I started my MMO, MMO in Asheron's Call, yep. mm -hmm. which ironically mm -hmm. was one of the games that uh, Eric and Sander both yep. worked on. Worked Yep. Uh huh. So I, it, it, it's kind of full circle for me that I get to work with them on it's this so cool. one. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool. I, I've I've been doing it now. Uh, August 2018 is when I started as an when I was elevated to an admin, and uh, I loved it. Oh, every of minute. this year? No, of August of 2018. 
Oh, yes, yes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I misheard you. Very cool. Yeah, we just we just did my five year anniversary back in August. Hey, yeah. congrats. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I know you're a beloved figurehead in the community. Everyone that I've run into that I have, you know, some degree of relationship with, with has only golden things to say about you. So your reputation uh, is definitely cherished uh, amongst the community. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I know there's some that love me, but I also know there's plenty that hate me, too. But, you know, that, that, <laughs> well, but, but, that, but that's an accepted thing. It comes with the job, you know. That's just yeah, something you, you have, have to, to police take. a little bit. Yeah, sure. There's, there's some... Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, if you're also a, a police fan, then you know the people you protect cherish you. The people that you have to protect from, <laughs> yeah, not so much. I, yeah, I, so I, I think it's safe to say I'm not on their Christmas card list. You know. <laughs> on the naughty list for them, huh? Absolutely. Well, that's funny. Uh, so uh, catch us up. Um, it's been a couple of years from our last conversation. Um, lots has gone on in development in Project Oregon. Obviously, there's uh, the recent string of events that we can talk about. Um, so for those who maybe they've dipped in and out of Project Oregon, they're, it's on the radar, but maybe off in the distance. Uh, what are some kind of high level, fun uh, launches or feature introductions or even just content that's been working on in the background that uh, we'd like to talk about? Well, uh, the big thing that's been brewing for a little bit is we just released the level 90 unlocks mm -hmm. and a, a massive new dungeon in order to get those unlocks done and that that's been brewing for a while uh, we still have the orc race uh, in the oven uh, state helm is kind of in the oven still being worked on and there's a few other things i don't know if the the boss man wants me to disclose them just yet or not. Oh, sure, sure. No, I understand that. So walk us through for people who may not be particularly familiar. So a level increase for skills in Project Gorgon is essentially a level cap increase for another MMO, right? It's not a trivial update the database and you have 10 more levels. These are, this affects skills. It affects uh, oh, enchantments yeah. that you can put on gear this is a a wide-ranging lift of capacity for pay, player power right oh ab absolutely it, it, and, and it's far 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 from just oh we just added another 10 levels in the code because you have mm -hmm. to do, yeah, i mean of course you do have to add the extra 10 levels for every single ability and skill in the game you know we've got over a hundred skills and it, it starts to get a little overwhelming when we do a level cap raise because you have to go through and you have to raise, you have to create the unlocks for all of those skills. And a lot of those skills have abilities. So in that next 10 levels, maybe there's going to be an upgrade for that ability. So we have to create all the upgraded abilities. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a skill like... is like a combat class in another MMO, right? Right. Uh, we consider a skill like sword or mm -hmm, archery mm -hmm. and then the abilities would be the the abilities that you would use associated with that skill mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it reminds me of guild wars one in which you can dual glass although in project gorgon you can level all of them independently obviously if you're leveling priest for example i believe necromancy you can't slot it at the same time but you can still level them independently from each other and so i forget offhand do you recall how many combat skills there are <laughs> you asked me that. My mind, you asked me that. My mind just goes blank. Uh, like, <laughs> I oh, can still God, hear you though. <laughs> oh, there, there you are. <laughs> Do you happen to remember uh, the number of combat skills, the distinct, you know, classes, combat classes that a single character can learn? I would have to count them because you asked me, and I just went blank. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the dozens, right? It's not like there's seven. There's maybe 50 i'm completely oh, speculating here but it's a non-trivial list probably close to 20 combat skills mm -hmm. and, and then with all the uh the side skills plus all the crafting skills and the kind of in-between skills i think we counted somewhere around 120 total skills available. all of which have their own and, abilities and gear exactly. mods and, and synergies recipes and, and yes. all of it yeah because it 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 What's excellent is you could level hypothetically sword and shield up to the max level of 90. But the way you play that build or kind of pseudo class, 
could be completely different if you decided to play sword and dagger, right? And so you swap out just one of those skills and suddenly you have a whole new way to engage with Project Gorgon. Right. Uh, the, the mix and match system or, or sandbox, as most people refer it to. Uh, That's a good way, yeah. Every Everyone loves that system. Um, you know, you get the people that, you know, they min max and they and they want the absolute best possible synergies uh, between two skills. And then you have some that, you know, I want to do this just to do this. And neither one of them is a wrong answer. Mm hmm. In fact, I was talking to, I forget which member of the community, but I did an interview and he was talking about, uh, in fact, another player who is reputation in the server. And, and I hope I, I'm remembering the story right, because I'll be releasing a video in which the conversation actually is. So it'll be funny to compare my memory now versus the details of that conversation. But what was uh, fun to listen to is there's a player who specifically plays the deer combat class, regardless uh -huh. if it is beneficial for the content that they're running and so it kind of reminds me of tabletop D, D in which you have a funky build and it just creates these fun dynamics with you're grouping with others and they have opinions and preferences about how you should approach it and if hey if you like running the deer build then you gotta roll with it yeah exactly uh, uh one one deer one lemon loving deer stands out i believe that would be mr greenberg I wonder if that is the individual. Again, I'll be able to cross-reference with the when the video video actually comes out. Uh, what type of player do you think Project Gorgon really does cater to? What's the 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 real target audience? Most likely, it's our 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 general player age is very awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. we 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 cater and to the older crowd. Uh, mm -hmm. the crowd that lived back in the quote unquote golden age sure. of, mm -hmm. of MMOs back in EverQuest and in the Shrine's yep. Call yep. and Ultima mm -hmm. Online and, and and games like that. All all of the uh, I consider the golden age pre WoW. And then gotcha. WoW, mm -hmm. and then and then WoW came and well, you know, things changed. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot more gamers came in. And uh, general attitudes started to change, and maybe for the better, or for the worse. Um, I'm personally not real sure, but um, the the older crowd tends to like the slightly more grindy stuff because they can sit down and just play. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not walk up to something, press a button. Oh, hey, I'm max level. Let's go home. Now, in terms of, let's say, there's uh, individuals that maybe they haven't, they didn't have the opportunity to play EverQuest, Ashron's Call back in the Golden Period, yet they find that modern representations of MMOs that, for the reasons you just described, maybe they feel that the instant level up, the very short journey is unfulfilling. Uh, what do we have to say about having them try Project Gorgon? Well, I, I for the for the modern gamer, I, I I understand their frustrations when they try out Project Gorgon because mm -hmm. you know they're used to that. It it's rush to the end game and mm -hmm. then enjoy mm -hmm. the game. And yep. this one is enjoy the journey. You know, when you get to sure. the end game, you're, you're there and and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of cases because of the sandbox style you can get to the end and then you can reset grab another pair of skills and start at level one again on the same character so you you can you don't have to just do it once you can do it again and again and again you can say you know well i want to try this but you know in most mmos you just have to stop create a new character and kind of start from mm -hmm. scratch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, here you can kind of hit the reset button grab another pair of skills but all of the side stuff that you've built up along the way like your foraging and gardening and stuff like that you can still use that as an advantage bringing up a second or third or fourth or even fifth pair of skills yeah in fact i was speaking uh, with a, a veteran of project gorgon and, and he admitted that uh after he had maxed out his first pair of skills he still felt like a newbie 
And I thought that was an exceptionally profound admittance in that you would expect someone who, especially with a, a, a game with the, the, the length of time it takes to get to level, it must have been 80 back then when he had maxed it out, or maybe 70, whenever the whatever the level cap was, uh, for there to be this awareness that there was still so much left to explore. And that's, I think, one of the magical components of Project Orgon. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the, the second trip is never quite like the first because mm -hmm. if you use a different pair of skills, they may be toned for, you know, you'd be better off against different kinds of mobs. So you might go level in a different dungeon or in a different zone than you did the first time before. And, you know, you didn't go to that particular zone very much the first time. So, oh, hey, I found this new thing. Oh, I found this. This actually exists. Why didn't I know this the first time we did this? Even in my experience, every time I hop back in to Project Gorgon, it it, it really feels like a, a a different experience. It's almost like having lived in a city at some point for a year or two and you move away and you come back and you see the landscape change, more development, different types of restaurants. It's familiar, but there's also this inviting call to explore what's new. Well, here is of the recent, uh, I don't, well, part of it is probably just the natural cycle of a lot of players, and, and some of it has been with all the news that has recently broken loose with the game. We've been seeing a lot of older players that have been gone for a year or two or three or four, in some cases six or seven, because the game state was in an alpha state for years before we got onto Steam. And they all log in, and about five minutes in, every single one of them says the exact same thing. Help, I am so lost. <laughs> that is relatable. <laughs> There's so much to do. There is, and, and that's always been a concern, especially with new players coming in. Sure. Once, they, once they realize what's all there, they're like, holy crap, what do I do? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and, and and even with even when I started playing, you know, when when I had the realization of everything that was out there, even you know, seven years ago, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. like uh, this is kind of overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So you know, the best advice I can give for that is uh, take a deep breath. It, it's okay. Uh, just focus. Try to focus on uh, maybe pick a pair of skills and maybe you'll work on this crafting skill or this side skill and, and just focus on those for a while. And then you can either take those to a certain level, stop, go back and do some other stuff. Or, you know, if you, if you like the multitasking, you can pick up a bunch of stuff and try to level it all at once as you move along. But that definitely slows down the journey and that can that can burn players out in a lot of cases so uh you know my my best suggestion is just pick a few things focus on them go back pick another few things focus on that yeah and the game does a decent job of helping guide players in that way there's probably more that can be done but for example my main build is archery and animal handling and I recall that I was in a dungeon. It must have been one of them available in the Cerebral region. And there was a golden ethereal knight far back in the dungeon. And no matter what I did, I couldn't defeat this particular boss. So that gave me a signal that, hey, there's probably a combat ability that I need to learn that can override a mechanic or open up an opportunity to finally defeat this boss. And uh, I believe that the shield skill has uh, an ability that provides an interrupt status effect, something along those lines. And the mechanic that I had to overcome was this golden ethereal knight in the back of this cave. You or the, the knight was only vulnerable to damage if they were stunned or interrupted, something like that. Okay. And the easiest way to access that state was through the shield skill, which I didn't have. So the game provided it's almost like a zelda style progression system in which you walk up to this hill but you don't have rope and but the game's kind of hinting to you like hey you kind of need rope to get up here but you got to go figure it out and so it added to the journey uh, it wasn't just oh you have these two skills and you can complete everything a lot of things i could complete but there were there was that particular instance in which i realized oh, okay they're starting to introduce these more complex mechanics 
Yeah, and, and that's something that uh, we have tried to fix with uh, the, the newer players. Is, sure. Uh, there's a particular skill called transmutation. And that allows you to take the modifications that are on your gear and you can roll them amongst the possible modifications that are available for that piece of gear mm -hmm. so that you can optimize it for your skill set and the abilities that you're using and what you want to accomplish. Like in that example that you just gave with archery, uh, mm -hmm. back then there was a mod that would uh, allow the bow bash skill to issue a stun. I did not know that. So there, okay, so there's not only one way to overcome the challenge. If you are aware of these other mechanisms, you can be creative. Exactly, because uh, there, because, well, I mean, it really comes down to it, and, and I'm sure a lot of the veteran players are going to agree with this, is that mods make or break the build, no matter, sure. no matter sure. what, what you do, what you make, how you make it, what you want to do with it. You've got to optimize. You don't have to exactly min-max, but you do need to optimize those mods to fit what you want to do. It makes a huge, massive difference in how you're going to perform. Because a lot of people, you know, they just throw, you know, they and when you're new, you're just, oh, oh, I found this helmet. I found this chest piece. And you throw it all on and you're running around. Okay, I got a little bit of armor. I'm killing this. I'm killing this. It feels this is like describing me right now. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm damaging and killing a little bit slow. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and most people will mention this in the global channels and that, you know, and, and, and everyone's become accustomed to the answer go see this person get transmutation so that mm -hmm. you can change your gear. They go yep. change their gear. They get mods that actually fit them. And they're like, oh, wow. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can actually drop this stuff really fast now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it reminds me of ARPGs in that, uh, uh, what, 90%? I guess it depends on the game. But uh, a substantial percentage of your efficacy as a combatant comes down to how harmonious your gear is with respect to your your damage type and your play style and project organ I, i've said this repeatedly and i still stand by it it has the best mmo rpg equipment system i've ever played in any mmo and that actually may be true across the gaming sphere i'd have to think carefully if there's another game even non-mmo in genre that competes but i absolutely adore and love Project Oregon's take on it. It seems like it's a nice evolutionary step from Ashran's Call, in which you probably uh, have a clear memory of this, in which any foe you defeated dropped loot that was procedurally generated. And Project Gorgon kind of takes that to a whole other level. And of course, uh, to the extent to which that observation is accurate like you mentioned earlier the designer one of the main designers for ashram's call is one of the main developers for project oregon so it makes sense that there's some parallels yeah and and we do try to to make stuff well i mean everything in the game is useful that's one of the overwhelming things and we've probably created a bunch of habitual hoarders in the world simply because because oh, this is every, useful. everything oh, everything, this. <laughs> everything you pick up in project gorgon is useful in some way there yep. mm -hmm. i think there's only one or two items that are completely worthless I is mean, one of them every, a feather ball am i remembering this properly one, one person would argue that <laughs> i interviewed this individual <laughs> We had a fun go around regarding that particular item. So there's use for it. It's just not mechanically <laughs> not, useful. Not, not, not very functional. But see, that's <laughs> yeah. the thing, though, is exactly. usually if you find an item in the game that is not useful, that usually means that it's going to be sometime in the future, whether that be next month or five years from now. And it 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 has instigated almost alarming amounts of hoarding <laughs> <laughs> but that's nice because you can trust that anything by and large that you loot interacts dynamically with some in-game system whereas in a lot of other mmos there's what uh labels on an item that its only use is vendor trash that's not very interesting but in project oregon you see there's this cog 
Oh, that is probably related to some system. Oh, here's this rune. Oh, what's that for? I mean, it, the list just keeps going on and on. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, and 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 that and that's probably one of the main problems we have always run into is uh, problems with inventory and storage. Sure. Uh, it's oh, gotten better though. Like you can add pockets to gear. And I recently saw that there's a community storage in Serapule. There's the the uh, transfer box in the casino. Um, uh, I, I remember earlier years ago that storage certainly was an issue uh, for me. Uh, but it seems like there's even more opportunities, more ways to store the items you think will be valuable in the future. Yeah, uh, the storage system is actually pretty vast uh, for for a new player it, it is definitely a struggle i mean in, inventory management is one of the first things that you have to to learn or it's just it's going to wipe you out it definitely was a concept changer realizing that by earning reputation with different npcs that they would hold on to items for me instead of in most MMOs, you have your local bags and you have your bank space, right? Whereas in Project Oregon, it's really scattered all over. Yeah, uh, we have kind of semi-unified the storage systems now uh, in a lot of the zones where there's a lot of NPCs that have storage. Uh, I did notice that. Yep, that was a nice change. Yeah, we do have the bookshelves. Those are mainly for the beast players. Uh, because in some cases, NPCs will not talk to the animal players. Gotcha. So that mm -hmm. way, if they unlock the storage as a non-animal, if they're an animal, they can go to the bookcase and still access it That's without cool. having to switch yeah. in and out. It's more of a quality of life thing. But also, if you go speak to a vendor that offers storage, uh, when you open them up, there's a list of all the other NPCs right below the storage. You can switch among them as well. That way you can do one-stop storage rather than have to run to this NPC and then it's run so nice. to this yep. NPC. But it, we've got it limited to a per-zone thing, so you still have to travel a little bit, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. Oh, that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it was Tuesday when I was uh, in that throng of people in Cerebule and uh, went up to one of the NPCs and noticed that, I'd, uh, noticed that I had access to all the local NPC storage. It was such a nice uh, update. Yeah, it does make things easier, and and we 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 try to throw as many storage options out there uh, as we can. We have the craftable storage boxes that anyone can use, and we also have the small box of space, which is available through uh, live event credit purchase, uh, and that's actually usable by people who don't own it. They just have to rely on someone who does have it to drop it to access that store that that piece oh, of storage. Cool. Yeah, I and and that. and then we have the very popular vendor fox in a box, which is uh, basically yeah, a, I a, saw a, that. A, port, a portable <laughs> that <was> so <laughs> Yeah, every everyone loves the fox in a box. And it literally was. I thought it was just a cute name, and then I see this fox exploding out of a box. I'm like, what? Oh, look at this! Oh, it was so funny. That that actually derived from a community joke. Uh, because when, when foxes came out, uh, discussion and, and just playing around all led to the, the saying of foxes and boxes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. well, we I, I ended up making a, a, a vendor fox from a box. <laughs> and it's a great vendor too. Everything in there is useful. Oh yeah, we'll see. Uh, it, we, we kind of made it on both sides, you know, for someone who doesn't have it, they can still use it when someone else summons it. Yes, but yes, I was able to use it. Yep. Their, their cash pool is limited, mm -hmm. but if you actually own the fox, uh, you gain favor with it by summoning it. Every time oh, you summon it, you gain cool. a little yeah. bit of favor. Yeah. And it requires 300 summons, I believe, uh, to reach soulmates. Gotcha. And, you yeah, know, uh -huh. I think in the beginning for someone who doesn't have one, I think the cash pool is like 10 or 12,000 councils a week. Mm -hmm. uh, once you have it to soulmates, it's 80,000 councils. 
Oh, man. Yeah, the quality of life on that is exceptional. Because Project Gorgon, unlike most other MMOs, it's I guess it's closer to UO in this sense, that individual NPCs will only buy particular items, and the price at which they choose to buy is relative to, to your standing. In addition to, they have, I think you mentioned, a weekly allowance for your character to to buy and so it's a very dynamic eco uh, uh um, economy Econ right and like the stuff like the vendor fox those are all purchased with live event credits so mm -hmm. we, we kind of let those items have the good stuff because you actually have to participate in live events whether it be the the static weekend events or the dynamic uh, random invasions and stuff like that you can earn anywhere between one and uh, I think 15 live event credits, depending on the event. Yeah. Like, uh, the larger, more detailed, elaborate events like the Zeleon event, which is the quote unquote Halloween event. I think you can earn uh, like 14 ish live event credits if you do the whole thing. Yeah. And that's quite a bit. I think over my character's career, I think I have only like 16 credits or so. So by doing this one event, you can have essentially uh, almost the entire uh, effort that I've put in. Yeah, and then I think the next big one, uh, Rishin, which is quote-unquote Christmas, uh, you have a random chance to earn a lot of live hmm. event credits, uh, depending. Mm -hmm. You can trip. You contribute the things that it demands, and each time you contribute, you have a chance of getting one live event credit back for your donation. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then uh, then there's the popular uh, Penix Pennant, which is kick golf. Uh, er, er, everyone kick loves golf. golf. Kick golf. Uh, so uh, soccer or European football, but uh, I guess golf, I haven't. <laughs> golf, but, you, but it, it, it's golf, but you're kicking around a big red shiny ball. I have not experienced this yet. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, you'll have to check that one out. E everyone loves golf. Well, most, I should say that. <laughs> most people love golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Something I want to emphasize as well, and I think this speaks to the, the interconnected uh, degree uh, with respect to the development team, the admin team, and the community. I forget when it happened. I forget if it was earlier this year. Maybe it was last year. Uh, but there was a change introduced that had some sort of ceiling. Uh, there's probably a better verb to use, um, but it affected the rate at which different skills could be leveled together. And initially, if I recall properly, there was some tumult in the community about that change. However, over time, um, it's actually gotten to a far better place. And that speaks to me uh, of the of the way that the development team really listens to the player base. Obviously, they needed to make these balance changes in order to make the game uh, have a, a better progression path and to uh, kind of nerf, so to speak, some different power spikes and maybe some hyper-efficient power leveling strategies. Um, but yeah. over the course of time, it's actually landed in a better spot. Um, anything you want to add to that in terms of, you know, someone's listening? I know that there can be some cynicism in terms of the development team versus a community. But to me, this experience, this story represents how the development team actively listens to the player base at the same time, balancing the development process of having a stable virtual environment. Oh yeah, I think I think you're referring to when we uh, took all of the top end gear and we removed one modification from every piece of gear. It was known as the Max Enchanted, which would give an extra mod for abilities on each piece of gear. Mm -hmm. uh, we we had to remove one from each piece because it was just so many buffs and it was. It, it was so difficult to balance the game with that many buffs. We had to tone it back a little bit, and mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and and that that was a fairly major nerf. And we we understand the angst from the, the community side because we took their buffs away. Sure, you know, we, sure. We, we took mm -hmm. some of their power away. They're, they're absolutely going to be upset. Uh, we, we get that, and we understand that. But th this was something that we just kind of had to rip the bandaid off on. Uh, and it did make a substantial difference. Uh, it made 
finding the holes where we need to buff something up or nerf it back a lot easier to see and that has yielded fruit since then and and the the players you know it was it was the knee jerk shock reaction but they've all kind of adapted to it and they they barely know it's gone at this point is that funny i imagine there's some psychological model that explains that uh, but to your point you're able to partner with the community listen to their complaints and understand it from their perspective yet from a balancing perspective the game is in a better spot as a result of having to in your words rip the band-aid off yeah we, we don't like to do that because i mean the backlash is real you know sure, sure. <laughs> and yeah. uh and and we have to deal with that but uh we 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 did it for the greater good. You know, we don't regret it, but uh, we're, we're glad everyone was able to kind of adjust and accept it. Yeah. Now, was there another change? And again, forgive me if I'm conflating something else. Was there an update to the way to... So here's a... I guess let me build out this concept. Let's say you have a sword level 70 and you have paired with it shield level 5. If I recall properly, there was an old, the old way of sort of power leveling the shield was you could fight mobs with your higher level sword ability and quickly catch up. And I, if I recall right, there was a change at some point between when we last spoke and today that there was a, um, what were like a, a, like a relativity sort of algorithm in the background that balances out the disparity between a higher level combat skill and a lower level combat skill, or am I completely speaking out of my depth? Am I maybe conflating something that happened in a different virtual world? Is this no, something remotely no, you're, familiar? You're, you're, you're actually dead on. Um, okay. Okay. We, we did have to implement uh, an adjustment because, you know, over the years we, 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 we sit and watch, you know, we watch. Yes. Yes. We're watching you. <laughs> big brother. <laughs> no, big no, no, big no. brother's watching you. <laughs> As well as system, system always proclaims, always watching, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, uh, you know, and, and we pay attention to those details, you know, we, we, we don't act on those things like super quickly. We kind of like to sit and watch and see how things play out because that gives us a better idea of what exactly we need to do to adjust. So with that, you could, you could take, you could have a soft cap max skill and take something from one up to it in in no time at all and under the old system under the old system mm -hmm. you know and because somebody could just level up one set of skills and or one particular skill and then they could use that to power level every other skill in the game or every other yep. combat mm -hmm. skill in the game yep mm -hmm. so we we, we kind of wanted to thwart that a little bit but we didn't want to make it so invasive that it wasn't fun at all mm -hmm. to, to level other skills. You know, we, mm -hmm. we want people to level a bunch of skills and we want them to mix and match and try it out, but we didn't want it so easy mode that, you know, you could have a full slate of skills in less than a week. Because sure, then, totally. you know, you've maxed them all out and you're like, okay, I'm done playing the game. You know, exactly. Yeah. With, with these types of MMOs, you know, we we want the more laid back, long term players. Although, the uh, the diehards are a dying breed in this modern gaming age. And so, walk us through the process because I think it was an iterative balancing mechanism between the first initiation of the the again sort of the relativity of how a how the relationship and experience gain works from a high level skill versus a low level skill eventually there was a, a several step process to get it in its current uh balance right 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 uh we we started with xp adjustments okay because that that was the the core of the issue so hmm. uh we started out you know if you if you have a lower skill we try to bring it down we tried to bring the xp gain down if you used a skill beyond 25 levels if the difference level. between was 25 there would be a some percentage reduction of xp yes right. gotcha right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um 
that kind of worked, but not really. So we 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 fine tuned it and, and tuned it and tuned it, and then we went into downgrading gear as well, where your gear would dynamically downgrade to fit the other skill. Yeah, low, I recently saw skill. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, we did attempt to make an adjustment where uh, power costs were increased to try and, and make it to where you couldn't uh, just sit there and, and wail away long term without having to stop and recharge. Mm -hmm. uh, that one did not go very well. Uh, we got a lot, of, a lot of feedback from the community about that one, and mm -hmm. we decided to abandon that particular aspect of it and mm -hmm. revert back to the old system. And this speaks to this dynamic interchange between having to balance the long-term health of the game and preserve the fantasy that's unique to Project Oregon, while also having an empathetic ear to the players that you know, I was able to interview uh, at least one individual who I think had over 10,000 hours of playtime and making sure that there is that proper balance. And sometimes you get close the first time, but you have to keep inching forward and, and have that humble uh, listening pos posture to get the game in the best spot for both the player's enjoyment, but also making sure that there aren't those uh, you know, outliers that um, could disrupt that, that fantasy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're always listening to feedback. I mean, sometimes the community feels like that we're not listening because we don't, we, we don't always instantly respond to the requests, but uh, we do sit Patience and we listen. Patience is a virtue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, mm -hmm. we, we try, we, on our side, we try not to knee jerk too much. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. If we feel something is, is too far out of whack, we will. And, you know, it'll be one of those, we'll, we'll tweak it and we'll take a look at it and reiterate, reiterate, reiterate. Well, I think that's wisdom. I'm not sure if you ever played Marvel Heroes. It was the Marvel action ARPG MMO. And they, I mean, this was years ago before the, the studio, unfortunately, went under. But they instituted a massive change to how quickly characters could move around the map. The reason that was significant was because most players figured out that you could simply teleport to the in-game boss within a number of seconds and just uh, ad infinitum repeat that process. And so by removing the core gameplay loop, a lot of people abandoned the title and it ended up being a pretty major scar injury on the, the community health. And, and later, uh, again, the game collapsed. I'm sure for more reasons than just that balance, that balance. So I think that also speaks to the maturity of the development team. And like I said, the having a patient attitude and, and letting kind of the data tell its own story and make adjustments where you need to, but not being too quick to, to rush to, um, like, a, like you said, knee jerk. Yeah. So, well, I mean, sometimes I, a lot of players don't know this, but you know, I, I sit here and I, I monitor the game and I see everybody doing this and that, and I see everybody talking and there, there are some things that they're passionate about that they want that we don't have yet or something that needs to be changed or altered or tweaked. And, um, a lot of people don't know this, but I advocate for them, uh, quite a bit more than I let on. Hey, well, I, I think I'm, I'm the one talking to Eric saying, you know, hey, you know, everybody's talking about this. Why why don't we tweak this? Because I like this idea, too. Let, let's, yeah. let's tweak this. Let's tweak that. Can, can we do that now or do we have to wait? I, I'm a little I'm I'm probably the little more hurry, hurry, rush, rush uh, than they are. They like to sit, wait, watch and, and well, it take sounds like there's a good balance. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You apply some of the pressure and they they uh, have to navigate that space as well. So, no, you're a real intercessor for the community i hope uh, uh people get to to hear this part of it and i think that's awesome so let's move on to our next topic i uh, want to honor your time here certainly some topics to discuss regarding the situation that recently has happened in the project gorgon community uh, quite a bit of news has surrounded it there does look to be a, a bright shining response from the community in light of um, anything you'd like to say for those who are maybe unfamiliar what recently happened and kind of give some context on 
Sure. Uh, well, we with with the release of this last major update, uh, we did announce that uh, basically we have drained the majority of the funds for development. Um, we do have some income streams via the VIP subscription and our backer packages, but it just hasn't been enough to sustain operations plus full-time development, even for such a small team. Uh, currently, we do have enough to uh, operate the server as it sits pretty much indefinitely. Uh, along with the, the VIP income stream that we have currently. But we're basically having to pull back the development schedule from full-time to part-time. So uh, most of the, uh, the contracted uh, developers have been let go, and Eric and Sandra will not be working on it full time anymore as they're going to have to do things to, you know, they got to eat, you know, so. Oh, of course. But we don't want the game to die. So I, I, I think um, a partial misconception with some people that have been looking at this, uh, they've been going, oh, no, the game's dead. Um, I can tell you, no, the game is not dead. Uh, the game will con the game will continue on but development will be much slower than it has been since we came to steam it will probably roll back to uh the the much slower alpha version pace and in context to this uh, there's been a community rallying uh with respect to the news um there's been a, a number of thousands of dollars that's been donated to help uh, the larger context is one of the main developers has severe you know medical issues and so just navigating that space in context to the investment required to develop an mmo rpg um, i know in the town hall section of the discord there were some comments i think it was earlier today about figuring out how to prioritize uh, those funds as they've been coming in um, do you know off the top of your head what the total amount raised has been in response to the news? Uh, yeah, sure. Let me pull it up here. And this is a, another reference to how exceptionally bonded the Project Gorgon community is rallying together. Like uh, we mentioned before, when a, when news, either you're nerfing player power or in this case, you're having to navigate real life challenges, uh, there's concern for kickback. But in, in this case, there's been quite a, a rally. There, there has been, and it, it, it's just been jaw dropping. I mean, uh, this just kind of, and, and, and this just kind of started out of nowhere. I, I mean, this, this last weekend, I was, I, I, I don't get to log on to my personal non admin account and play very often anymore because, you know, admin life and all. But uh, I, I decided, you know what, I'm going to log in and I'm going to play this weekend. So I logged in and, you know, just talking to people. And I looked over and I realized we have a, a regular donation button on our official forums where you can just, just straight up donate. There's no package or anything. If you just want to give money, you can give money. And uh, I noticed there was a $1,000 donation there. Mm -hmm. and, and I mentioned it. In, in the game, you know, oh, wow, so, you know, somebody donated a $1,000. That's, mm -hmm, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a big deal. Cause you know, it most is. people, they'll just do, you know, the, the typical five, 10, $20 and, and that's all good. But that, that thousand dollars stood out mm -hmm. and uh, I mentioned it. And then somebody else said, check, check again and looked and it was a $15,000 donation. Incredible. And I mean, you know, somebody just walks in, throws fifteen thousand dollars on the table. Oh, you right. have my, you, you have my attention, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and and I mentioned that, and then it just started trickling in a hundred and fifty, and a hundred and five hundred, and a thousand, and a hundred, and this and that and the other. And uh, in in the matter of twenty four hours, we racked up twenty five 
thousand five hundred and eighty four dollars and just pure donations that's not counting vip that's not sure, counting sure. backer mm -hmm. packages that's just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. straight up we're giving you money donations I know you can't see my face, but I have a smile from ear to ear. That it's just such a wonderful reflection of the community. Oh well, I mean that fifteen thousand dropped in, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pinging the bosses, going, "You need sure. to look at yeah. this," and mm -hmm. and we're mm -hmm. all just sitting here with our jaw on the floor, going, oh, "I did, it. yeah." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then I had to take the deep breath, and I was like, "Well, so much for playing on one today." <laughs> Because that got my attention. Yes, it did. Yes, it that, did. That, yep. that got the juices flowing. I was like, yep, well, yep. Th this deserves attention. So I logged off my character and I jumped on, on jumped on my admin Jack character, happily, mm -hmm. mind you, happily. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. just started giving crap away. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. you know, if, if somebody is going, or if a group of people are going to be that generous, I'm going to give back for that. I mean, it, it, it deserves it. It deserves yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Reciprocity, right? So, no. yeah, most, <laughs> most of that day was spent with me uh, dropping reward chests. And, well, since <laughs> level 90 just came out, that reward chest had a bunch of level 90 goodies in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, everybody was collecting a bunch of free loot and free live event credits, and well, occasionally, you know, the blood price for it has to be paid. So I'd spawn a few mobs and kill everybody <laughs> and, and stuff like that. Got to keep the balance, you know. Right? Yeah, yeah. Give and take. Give and take. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that that was just insane. I mean, it's it it it, it almost it almost brought me to tears just. To oh, sure. see to just yeah. to see that rally from the community, you know, the most yeah. you know, no, the game is not dead. We want it to live. We're gonna do mm -hmm. what we need mm -hmm. to do to, to help it get further down the road. No, exactly. Um, and you know, for those listening right now, in fact, in response to the generous outpouring from the community i believe there are experience buffs and expanded local personal storage and so right now it really is the best time to play project orgon i know i recently uh, activated my vip i also donated as well on the website and uh, even though there was that uh, initial difficult announcement the communities rallied together you mentioned earlier that people who have played five six seven years ago are now beginning to show up again uh and hopefully this is uh in the the breath of life that uh, the game needs to get it over the the release line release exactly and you know we are we are listening to everyone's suggestions uh, as to what we can do to help generate more funds we're, we're kind of stuck in that weird spot right now because it's a there, novel situation yeah there, there's a lot of things that are still broken and we're still in beta mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we we don't want to uh we don't want to over monetize while still in a beta state because it, absolutely yep. it, it, it's just weird it's yeah it's just weird so you know we're kind of caught with that but we're still too far from the finish line to just punch it and say okay let's launch and monetize so we're we're just kind of trying to figure out what we can do i mean everybody you know everybody's sitting there shaking money in our face we want to throw money at you you know we get get Get, give us some reasons to spend more money with you. So that's a lot of the discussion that's going on in the town hall channel on our official Discord right now. Is, Which is uh, a just, great problem to have, admittedly. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, you know, and, and like Sandra, or was it Eric? I don't remember. One of them said that, you know, we we initially went through a lot of these ideas and we shot them down. Uh, some of them primarily for the beta situation sure sure but you know we'll we'll definitely are going to give a revisit to a lot of them i mean we've had offers from several players you know hey we'll uh, for example you know we'll, we'll buy you a couple of a hundred uh project gorgon posters and get them printed up and we'll give them to you so that you can sell them for 
fundraising and sure. uh-huh. you know and and we have someone else offering this and someone else offering that and you know it's 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 just crazy how much outreach there has been and which goes to show that the people that project gorgon really selects for in terms of community and game design decisions uh it, it's so magnetic that whenever news came out about just the given situation that people's natural reaction was not to abandon ship which you would expect psychologically and i'm sure there are examples of this where hey some financial issues are are ever present that people just decide to pack up and leave and leave well, the reaction was completely different. And as you've been describing, there's been this overflow of, of wanting to be part of the solution. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely something we didn't quite expect. We, we were expecting a lot of people to just kind of throw their hands up. Oh, my God, the game's going to die and everybody sure. walks mm-hmm. away. I mean, right. that, that, is, that is what we expected yeah. from a, a large portion. But mm-hmm. everybody's staying. Everybody's out there. Uh, reaching out to all the news outlets uh, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I know they've been uh, I, don't, I don't know how many contacted you and go hey you know so this is going on over here but we've had some people contact like massively op yeah. mm-hmm. and yep. uh, and mmorpg and, mm-hmm. and stuff mm-hmm. like that uh, trying to strum up some attention for it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which all goes to say that I mean it's, it's a, a it's a remarkable turn of events in that for those listening if you've been on the outskirts of project gorgon if you've heard of it or even if this is your first time being introduced to it it's still the best time to hop on and to to engage and to experience the game because the community isn't going anywhere and uh, with this uplift uh, this is the best time to start oh yeah absolutely and with those buffs that we gave uh, as a thank you for the donations probably by the time this is released the xp buff will be gone but uh the plus 100 personal inventory slots will be running through the end of the month which is a big deal (laughs) oh yeah yeah because like we were talking about earlier the uh the the, the hoarding is real Mm -hmm. and and yeah everybody's like 100 yes and they're already like i'm full (laughs) it's like i can't give you any more But uh, speaking of that, I will say this. Uh, I did make the offer while we were uh, doing all of the giveaways and everything. Uh, if we were to reach uh, $35,000 on the donation meter before the end of the month, I will extend the plus 100 inventory slots to run all the way through December. Mm-hmm. And I will also give everyone another week of the XP buffs that they are experiencing right now. And it just makes the game even easier to access, having that increased acceleration, especially on the front end, having expanded inventory slots so that your gameplay flow isn't completely interrupted. Uh, It really is ideal. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're a new player, you're going (laughs) to... When 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 when, the, when when these buffs were up, they're gonna be like, "Well, what the hell's going on?" <laughs> right, I know. What Where did all my inventory to... space go? Oh crap! Yeah. I'm what? I'm ne- I'm negative two hundred slots. <laughs> I, I can't walk. What am I gonna do? Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's not like your gear disappears. You just can't run or something, right? Your walk speed is reduced or right. something. Is that yeah, what it works? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, that's right. I I, I call it the walk of shame. <laughs> Everyone knows what's happening when they see the character just walking. They, they see someone out in the middle of nowhere just slow-stepping it back towards town. You know what happened. Oh, that reminds me being over-encumbered in early EverQuest. And it, it, it is a walk of shame. Oh, that is so funny. Wow, that is a nostalgic thought. Wow. Oh, that is so funny. Any ending words, Jack? Really, the, the only thing I can say is I just I want to thank our community for being our community. Yeah. And and not letting it go sour and, and standing up and, and helping us to survive. Yep. You know, yep. we, we, we cannot do this without the community. Without the mm-hmm. community, we're, this game will die. And uh, just thank you, everybody, for being here and playing the game and enjoying it. Well, we're glad that you've enriched our lives as players of Project Gorgon. 
Um, we're so happy to be part of the success story that it is turning into. Again, Jack, thank you so much for your time. And uh, until next time, my friend. Mm, glad to be here. Take care. You have a good one, buddy. As mentioned earlier, several more interviews with Project Gorgon veterans, including its main developers, are being produced. It's free to try on Steam and is currently on sale for the full version, so there's never been a better time than now to try. To have a chance to win a free copy, please download the demo and comment below writing what you enjoy about the MMORPG. Feel free to include criticism too. I will be in contact with the winners. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more MMO content.